Saudi Arabia Authority have decided to reduce the salaries of African workers. African workers, African ladies that work as domestic workers and helpers. Many Africans, many ladies go to Middle East looking for better life, uh, hoping to do good. They expect to get paid, you know, coming from poor countries, do okay and go help their families. So a lot of Kenyans, a lot of Ugandans, Ethiopians go to the Middle East hoping to get a good job, work as a domestic worker, as a helper, as a cook, as a maid. You know, hoping to make ends meet, make some money and come and help the families. Now, Saudi Arabia has come up with a new law to reduce those salaries of those people and also a package of laws. Okay, so the Saudi Arabian cutting fees for Ugandan domestic workers and Kenyan domestic workers. It's been a shock for many Kenyans and Ugandans. Let me just remind you here, you have about 80,000 Kenyans working in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia precisely. 80,000 Kenyans, 60,000 in Dubai, and 220,000 Ugandans. That's a lot of people. So they made some amendment because they heard that people complained quite a bit on the treatment that many of these people were subjected to. I mean, the treatment was really, really bad for many of these African ladies. Some of them went and they were abused mentally, physically, abused sometimes in their intimacy. He came where I was sleeping and he told me, I want you. And I told him, no, I can't. I'm married. And he told me, you are in my house, you have to obey my, my, my rules in this house. Uh, yeah, really, really bad. And sometimes some actually lost their, because they had an argument with the boss and they couldn't agree on something and they decided to throw them over, you know, falling. And there's nothing you can do about it. These ladies are subjected to so much abuse. Sometimes they take their passports, they hold it. Uh, somewhere where you have no access to your own passport, so you cannot run away. There's nothing you can do about it. And there's no laws that condemn these people. Now, they've come up with some laws. I don't know what reason, what's the reasons behind, but they've come up with some laws to try to you know, adjust things. The new regulatories are, law number one, age. So domestic, so domestic workers must be 21 years and above only. No more hiring younger children, you know, younger people. No more allowed. The dates are Gregorian dates on the contract, not Islamic date. Uh, unpaid salaries is considered first degree debt. Before unpaid salaries could just go like that. There's nothing you could do about it. You could not accuse the boss to nobody. Now, if you have unpaid salaries, uh, it's considered first degree debt. Contract must be based on standardized government template. That's law number four. Government will provide template for this contract that sometimes people drew their own contract that was ridiculous, really, really sad for these African workers. Law number five, probation period. Sponsors or worker can end employment. So during the probation period, if the employee is not happy with the boss, he can also say, you know what? I don't think this is working for us. Thank you very much for your help. Uh, goodbye. They couldn't do that in a boss. Because then they will tell her, we spent money to bring you over. There's no way you're leaving, you're going to stay. You literally stay as a prisoner. Working hours, law number six, working hours, no more than 10 hours daily. Yeah, many of them complained working 20 hours, 22 hours a day. It was insane. Dude, you get some crazy stories coming out of these countries from African workers. The food must be taken care of by the employer. The employer is not to keep the employee personal document. No racist or sexist abuse. Obviously, that's going to be very difficult to, you know, no verbal, physical, and mental abuse. So you can see the Saudi Arabian government is trying to change things, at least look good. You know, we know that they cut down the salaries, but they're trying to implement some rules, some laws, so people of the country or the kingdom can be, live by the rules. To get residency permits, you first need to pass medical test. You also have three months to try out the probation. Well, you know, people who come from the continent most of the time, they need to go through medical test. They don't do the same for everybody, trust me. Yeah, that's what it is. 
So again, fellas, um, many Africans, many African ladies go to the Middle East looking for a better life. Uh, mainly because in many spaces in Africa, life is not very good. Life is hard. I mean, if you come from a country like South Africa, you must be very lucky. If you went to school, your university, your degree, yeah, it's a country where you can actually get a job if you got the papers to back you up. This is not valid everywhere in Africa, unfortunately. And I need to, we need to talk about this very clearly, unfortunately. I mean, as much as apartheid was really bad for the people, it was really, really bad. But some of the system that was installed were not installed in any other African countries. I'm just being honest with you. Unfortunately, you know, from infrastructure, from development, from capabilities, from today, you being able to get a job that pays well, that, that enables you to have a house, a car that you pay on a monthly basis is something that many African nations do not have at all. So in many African nations, if you have a job, you have a job. If you don't have a job, you're going to suffer. Number two, you may really have a job or the qualification, but you're still suffering because the salary is absolutely nothing. And people sometimes with qualifications have to travel abroad to different horizons hoping to get a standard life that you have. So the Kenyan Senate Standing Committee on Labor and Social Warfare report around 80,000 Kenyan workers in Saudi Arabia. 80,000, that's a lot of people. And 60,000 in Dubai. Plenty of them. And the Ugandans report from 2016 to 2022, over 220,000 people left the country to work in the Middle East. And 85% of them were domestic workers. So that's a lot of people. So how can Africa change things, make things better for people? I mean, come on, fellas, let's look at it. One of the reasons why many people do not respect Africans is because of the type of jobs that we do. I mean, not many people respect helpers or domestic workers. Especially if he comes from a different country, not many people do respect them. People perceive them like lower grade human beings. Like, now how can your country have a level of value if the majority of people you produce coming into my country as Arab person are domestic workers? Where are your engineers, your doctors, your physicists? And I think domestic workers of each country should work in their own country. I mean, yeah, at least work in Africa not in in a different space where you're not going to get the respect that you deserve and i think it's the task and the duty of each country individually to work hard to provide possibilities for these people either to work in a country and make a living than going out there and being subjected to all sort of abuses and then crying over why do you cry over situations that you you you, you can clearly change so fellas saudi arabia has reduced the price they have reduced the salaries of these people. It's very sad for them. But yeah, I think sometimes we shouldn't just be complaining about why people do this to us, why people do that to us. I think it's about time Africans start building Africa, where Africans can actually grow within the African continent and do better. Instead of going out there and being subjected to all sort of mistreatment and sadness. Enough. <laughs> Now, there's a lady in Côte d'Ivoire who's from Algeria. You know, Côte d'Ivoire, every course. Here's a map. There is the African Cup of Nations happening in Côte d'Ivoire. It's a competition of all African nations playing soccer uh, in order to see who's the champion. A little bit like the World Cup, but African version of it. Now, this lady from Algeria made a video commenting about Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is Côte d'Ivoire. It's the same thing. <laughs> يا حصرة على الجزائر ويا حصرة على باقي دول افريقيا يا وتحية الجزائر الحمد ربي الحمد ربي اللي عندنا بلاد كيما الجزائر الحمد حنا نورمالمون على بالكم رانا حنا حنا نورمالمون الجزائر موجودة في الخريطة بين البرتغال واسبانيا باسكو هنا عايشين واحد المعيشة وكان وريت لكم اني سجلت لا فيديو في الليل كنت بين فلاكار يا ودي العصر الحجري وقليل والله العظيم وكان جا عندي حكم صغير هكذا برك شويه عندي البوفور اقسم بالله العظيم غير نبعث المواطن الجزائري مره يفد قلت لكم في الكاميرون الاخر آه المهم جيت تشوف برك الكوتيفوار يعني في ابيجون اه دي مو سي ليكيب دو كامرون كي سي شي فو شي واز ميكين ا كومنت سينغ ويل افري كوست لوكس لايك ا prehistoric country it's disgusting uh, uh, her country algeria algeria is in the north should be part of Europe, you know, in between Spain and Portugal. 
it shouldn't be part of Africa because Cote d'Ivoire is, is a representative clearly of Afri black Africa. The video has made a lot of noise. Arriving in Cote d'Ivoire to follow the African Cup of Nations, the Algerian Sofia Beneman attracted the lightning of Ivorians, the anger. In a video published on the web, she shocked more than one person with her word. She said, first of all, the Algerian woman was outraged at the fact that her country was considered an African country. Then Sophia Beleman did not hesitate to denigrate Cote d'Ivoire and the organizing country of the soccer competition. She said, long live Algeria. We thank God for having a country like Algeria. Normally, Algeria should not be in Africa. It should be found between Portugal and Spain. Yeah. Because the Ivorians are experiencing one of the, these misery. I recorded a video last night at the session. It's even worse than the prehistoric era. I swear to you that if I had a little power, I would take Algeria people so they can see. <laughs> wow, this is crazy. She believes Algeria should be somewhere between Portugal and Spain. Again, fellas, this is clear. This shows you the inferiority complex that people have wanting to belong to. Uh, you know, a group of people where people actually don't even look at you. They don't even see you. You want to be part of Europe. Europe doesn't even see you. It's very, very sad. Okay? And put this into perspective. Africa is massive. You have Northern Africa and Southern Africa. The Northern Africa people look very much like Arabic, a little bit like Arabic. they light skin in color. They speak mostly Arabic they're mostly Muslim. The southern part of Africa is mostly where you see the dark-skinned Africans. And for some time, you will see many people in the northern side of Africa feel like they do not belong in Africa. You know, yes. Unfortunately, sometimes, some Africans from the southern part of Africa, the dark Africans, will go to the north and they'll get very bad treatment, which never happens the other way around. When the northern people come to the south, they open shops and, you know, all that stuff, they open supermarkets, people support them, they accept them into the neighborhood. But the southern people, sometimes when they go to the north, they are beaten up, they are arrested and stuff like that, and it's very sad. However, uh, do you really believe that everybody in the north feels that way? No. I don't think everybody in northern Africans feel they're not Africans. I don't think everybody in northern Africa are racist or hate darker Africans. I don't think so. You know, in fact, I think the majority of people are just okay. But it is the minority. It is these ignorant people. I mean, the minority is not, it's not small. It's millions of people. It's these people that are dangerous. These people that create separation, that don't understand the, 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 the importance of being united. I mean, if you're not African, you shouldn't be part of this soccer nation cup. You should be somewhere else playing. Why don't you play Euro, Euro soccer? Yeah, Euro soccer uh, competition. Because you, you don't belong there. Africans must be united. Like I said earlier, I firmly believe brotherhood has nothing to do with skin color. Brotherhood goes way beyond that. Being somebody's brother is not being necessarily somebody you look alike. Being somebody's brother is being a person that's present, a person that listens, a person that supports when they're in difficulties, a person that will give them a hand when they cannot handle it, when things are hard. That's brother. That's the brotherhood we want to see. It's not about claiming and chanting. and um, It's not about that. It's about action. Again, fellas, uh, Saudi Arabia has reduced the salaries of African domestic workers. Uh, I think this is just ridiculous to even talk about it. Uh, it's sad. And now, also, there's a video of this lady that's going to be expulsed from Cote d'Ivoire. They're going actually to kick her out. They're going to chase her. I think good for her. She needs to go back home and go and embrace Algeria. I mean, it's, it's stupid people that create insane situations. But I know, let the love reign because many Tunisians are against that. You know, many Algerians are not happy with what she said. God bless.